Amy at EuroLuxHome.com. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning about European antiques, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and maybe even share it with a friend who might also enjoy learning about European antiques. So I am often asked, what have you found inside all of the antique furniture that you've dealt with over the past 20 years? And I have to say that we are always searching for big stashes of cash or jewelry or other treasures. And in 20 years, we've never found it. Uh, but I thought that I would show you all kinds of cool stuff that we have found over the years. And we always put it in one big box because it's just fun to see what sort of treasures come out of the pieces. So uh, there's lots of coins, uh, lots of centimes and guilders. Those are the old kind of coins before the euros were around. Um, but that's actually one of the most valuable things that we've had is this coin. And it has the date stamp of 1780 on it and the mark VOC, which means that this was actually made by the Dutch East Indies Company um, and was stamped 1780. So this is the most special thing that we have found in 20 years and you could buy one on eBay for about $10. So <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. Uh, but um, there's lots, all kinds of things. So there's toys, uh, a little plastic spider, a little plastic compass, um, a little baby doll head. Uh, here's just a little mushroom that would have maybe been on a cake um, and marbles. Uh, as far as jewelry goes, we've had just costume beads and chains. Uh, here's an old watch strap. Um, and all kinds of little knick-knacky things that would go around the house, uh, some old beer caps, and uh, an old bottle, old glass bottle, that's kind of neat. Uh, we did find a Kodak camera, and we've never actually processed the film. Uh, maybe one day we'll get around to it, but that's kind of a mystery item. Uh, now here's something, somebody went to Spain and got some castanets. So that's kind of cool. Oop. And then uh, these are some an old stapler. And what's neat is that the old staple boxes uh, are there in the drawer with the stapler. And this one is really neat. Um, it is a box of thumbtacks has the old packaging. Really kind of cool. No date on there though. Uh, here we have an old baby diaper pin and some old keys. Here's a baby pacifier, uh, some stamps, uh, lots of books and a little fan. Um, these are kind of neat. So these are old Bibles um, and in Flemish. So old Bibles, pretty neat. And uh, we, we have found um, some uh, notebooks and this is nice. It's somebody was writing poems and they added a little uh, picture, but it's a whole notebook full of poems that they've written. So in their own handwriting. So that's kind of neat. But uh, the worst thing that we ever found was an old nasty tooth. Uh, I actually was trying to, a drawer wouldn't go all the way in and I was got down inside the piece and uh, there it was, an old yucky yellow tooth. That's the worst thing. Um, but uh, I particularly enjoy photos. I think it's really neat to see, you know, and this is evidence of who owned the piece, um, maybe, or their family or friends. And, um, and these photos are connected to a particular estate that we went to. Um, it was the priest of a parish and we went to his estate after he passed away. And I think that this little girl here in the picture 
is this woman, um, gr all grown up. And, but this particular um, piece of furniture, when we bought two pieces out of this estate, uh, a Louis Philippe server and a little chest of drawers. And believe it or not, they both sold to two different people in two different transactions on two different marketplaces. And we delivered them in the city of Chicago within eight miles of each other. Isn't that just incredible? I think that that's just a really neat story. But the number one thing that we have found in all of our years of being an antique dealers uh, and bringing in all of these European pieces is this great big stack of paperwork. And it came out of a really beautiful Louis Philippe desk. And it was all in the desk and uh, it's uh, all written in French. And as we started to read through the letters, it tells the story of Monsieur Betancourt. And Monsieur Betancourt lived at 71 Rue de Lille, La Madeleine, in Lille, France. And he bought his house, there's the original transaction, uh, the deed, in July of 1935 and he bought an insurance policy, and it's here in the stack as well. Now, unfortunately, the Germans surrounded Lille in uh, 1940. To be specific, May 27th, 1940, a ring of German tanks surrounded the whole city of Lille, and they bombarded the city over four days. And finally, uh, the, the French soldiers that were inside the city um, surrendered and they laid down their arms four days later. And so the official end of the siege of Lille was on June 1st, 1940. And the total death count during that uh, siege was 174 people. And the Germans took out two bridges and totaled 220 buildings. Now, during that bombardment, Monsieur Betrancourt's home was damaged. And so he reached out to that insurance policy and he asked for the sum in today's money, it's just under $70,000, which was a lot of money back in 1940. And so this is actually, uh, it, it starts with his application and it goes all the way through him sending letters to the insurance company and them denying the claim and he reapplying and back and forth and back and forth. Eventually he went to court and there's court documents in here as well. And by 1962, Monsieur Betrancourt finally won. He was very patient. He waited 22 years, but that goes to show that if you're diligent and you really go after something, it might pay off in the end. So that's the story of the most interesting thing that we have found in a piece of furniture over the past 20 years. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of these little uh, ephemera or little miscellaneous things. It's fun to just look at this old pen and think about who used it and who held it and what letter they wrote or what they wrote in their personal diary, what they were thinking. Uh, it's just fun to, to remember the pe that these pieces were owned by people and people had stories. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like this episode, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and maybe even share it with a friend who might also enjoy learning about European antiques. See you next time. Mm -hmm.